Hi everyone, this is another session with me and Christo Dutui, you know, and his amazing contributions. Talk a little bit about some design decisions and, you know, some really, really great contributions to this brother here, you know, I've been doing for our exceptions library with the X. Uh, you know, Florian from France is saying we should say e exception, you know, so people would know it's with an X. You know, I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly, Christo, but, uh, you know, I'm going to have to kind of bring him in on the channel and ask, actually ask him what is E exception? Is it E exception <laughs> like that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I already have an accent as it is. I don't know if people are actually going to catch the difference. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> so so you you created this PR, you know, let, let's uh, let's let's navigate to your PR first and then let's have a little discussion together. Usually these uh, these discussions turn out to be very, very, very interesting. Okay, so let's go to GitHub, and we have e exception, <laughs> like Floyd <laughs> would say. Okay, here it is. Okay, so there's that guy here, and what this change is doing is that it's allowing us to kind of piggyback on top of the existing fluent assertion kind of terminology so the engineering experience is much better and we're basically going and saying okay i can actually use actual exception be equivalent to when in reality you're not like if we do just for people to understand you know if we do sh like you could do should be equivalent to another exception in fluent assertions today the problem is that fluent assertions doesn't know you know, what are the fields that we care about versus a stack trace? Like it goes and compares the stack trace and the stack trace will always be different because the stack trace has the origin of where that exception came from. And since we're mocking it, they will never be the same. Fluent assertions also goes and tells you, hey, you could actually ignore some fields if you don't care about them. But now the engineering experience and writing code has become absolutely garbage. It's become really, really hard. You know, imagine I was just, you know, Christo, I was just asking a, a junior engineer yesterday, you know, I was asking them this exact question. I was like, hey, you're going to be my measurement into determining whether that direction is valid or not. Right. And I and they don't even have to say anything. It's just the expression on their face. Right. As soon as I give someone code and they go like this, they flinch like this. I'll be like, yeah, that's bad code. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need no further explanations anyway so this is the so this is exception assertions this is a new file right and the exception yeah. assertions has the uh function which is be equivalent to right that's great and, yeah okay so you're so should the method should will still be coming out of fluent assertions yes but, that's correct uh, yeah so uh, so basically what we've done here is in, in fluent assertions the um type comparisons of type object. So what we've done here is we've done an override on the exception and made that type equivalent to um, exception. So it knows that um, when, when it gets to that choice that it, it, it's it got something to compare it against that's of that type. Otherwise, it'll use the fallback of object. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we just added all the rules in the same way that they've done it in fluent exertions in... In, in their source. In their source, yeah. Wow, look at that. Look at all that. I didn't even know, like, is this an exposed API that we can use in the real world? Just this way? Or is this internal to the to the exception reference type assertions? Yeah, that's that's to reference type that's assertions. It is. Yeah. So so fluent assertions, even internally, has this kind of model of fluently validating things. That's very interesting. That's very, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's quite nice to play with that. Um, wasn't wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. I, I to be honest with you, you know, it's a it's like a it's a black box. Like you never know. Like you're gonna open it up. You know, yesterday I was digging into X unit because I'm really, really irritated with the fact that I have to say as task for, for methods that are returning value task. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And then I realized there's actually a version that is not released yet you know, that actually solves that problem. It says, oh, we handle only funk of task. We're going to handle funk of value task, right? But it's not released yet, you know? So I'll be like, okay, at least someone's thought about it, you know, 
funny enough, you know, in the discussions about this feature, there was a guy in there raising up that concern and he actually worked with me before. Like he's a guy that I know, he knows the standard, he knows all these things. And he's like, hey, you know, can you guys do that little thing for us, please? So let's see, let's go through this PR. I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things and um, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I went through that PR a couple of times. I think it's all right. You know, I, th I don't think there's much things going on there. I really appreciate your effort this year, uh, Chris. Uh, are you good? Have you have you tried this already with 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 some uh, with some examples? I mean, the tests are already saying that. But are you good with this with these binaries? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've, uh, if, if you go up to that um, logic one, uh, so I'm just uh, no back to your unit test. I think or. This one here. No, sorry. It is that uh, assertions one. Um, so, 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 so uh, I think it's just exceptional assertion. So one extra thing that I added as well is that we've mm -hmm. um, added a comparison between um, the data collection on the exception as well as data on the inner exception. It, it just makes it a bit more complete. I know. I know. You, yeah, I, I, I noticed that part too. So just just for people watching we Christo basically he we usually just look at the data in the inner exception assuming you know that there's a categorical categorized and localized exceptions but he said well what if you needed to actually also compare you know the the outer exception data for whatever reason out there i'm okay with that absolutely 100% genius as long as <laughs> if this data comes in as null or some odd type you know, as long as we're not reacting to it. Okay, here's, I found something that I could do here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that, I think that's the only one. Okay, fine. I, I, I wonder if it's going to let me do, like, let's say code rub. This is what I love about this um, uh, GitHub um, kind of run the editor in the browser. You can just do something like that. Remove extra line. Okay. Here we go. Uh, oh, it actually it actually let me do it. How crazy is that? Yeah, nice. Is this is this branch directly against the the exception repo or is it out of a fork? Do you know? It's out of a fork. Um, I'm I'm not on your repo yet. That's odd. How did it? How did it let me do that? If this is on your branch, because I should have permissions. That's weird. Something is up there. Why? So, so let me add. Actually, let me add you to our uh, as a contributor. I, I, I think you earned it. What do you think about <laughs> that, Chris? You know, I think you did enough in here. C G C J C J D D U T O I T like this. D U D U I T. There you yeah, are. That's oh. It. oh, I T. Yeah. <laughs> So it finds you and then it disappears. C O I T. <laughs> D O or D U? Tango, Oscar, India Tango. Yeah. There you it. are. Found you. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that should be it. Let me show you something interesting I also noticed the other day. So I just upgraded Git file, right, to have a percentages on projects. Like there's something called Git file management dashboard. And if you look at this project here, I did not know that. I did not know you carried 34% of this entire project. <laughs> sure. That's that's scary because the average is five. Like we're basically going and saying, if everyone on this team did 5%, they did their part. You did 35%. That's seven times as much. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was all right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know about I don't know about the exception project though. Like the um, exception project in here, yeah, it's probably Shri for the most part, and I think she because she did the infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. But hey, you're here, yeah. you know, <laughs> right there. So okay, <clears throat> here's here's the thing. I'm gonna merge this PR. I'm gonna make a release like right now after the build is complete, and. The other thing that I wanted to ask you about is the um, 
the details, right? So when we go and say same exception as. Yeah. Today, this is the most confusing thing in the world. We're going to need to think about this together, uh, Chris. You know, the, what is, what's it going to take to actually tell people, hey, your previous exception had data that looked like this, but it was supposed to be like that. Fluent assertion it's, could help us a lot there. I just it's don't doing know. that at the moment. It's already doing that? Yeah. Did you already fix it? I, I did it, yeah. <laughs> No way. Are you kidding? Are you messing with me? Let's see. No, no you go, didn't. Did you? Go, go go into one of the tests. We can add the extra item. It'll, it'll give you the nice fluent message. No way. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, man. You know, you're you're such a blessing, Chris. I swear to God, I'm telling you, brother. It's okay. Let's see. Let me, let me use it in one of my bigger, bigger projects. This is actually the core of Git file. This is where all the magic happens. There's a whole bunch of components, but let's see here. That's just me and Kailu playing around yesterday. Let's see if I if I go into well, I may as well, right? Go change this guy. Okay, so what additional magical item do I need to add that would make it work? Tell me. So if you if you've got uh, either less or more in your data dictionary, it will report on both. Mm -hmm. um, that you've got a missing key, and if you've got the same amount of keys with uh, correlating names, it'll also tell you if the values is different. I'll try it now. Let's see. I'm gonna go here and say, take that key out. And then I'm gonna run this test. When you look at this code, does it look foreign to you, or do you know immediately what I'm doing? Uh, I know immediately what you're doing. Yeah, that's the yeah. beauty of the standards there. It takes zero yeah. seconds. Okay, so this should fail. It should fail. Oh, why? It's not failing because... Oh, ho, ho, ho. hold on. Let me go back here. I just discovered something. If the test is not looking, okay, so if I cancel this rule here, and I go back to the test, and run this, let's see what happens. Okay, so the error that's coming out from here is, let's see, so here's a test explorer. And here's the failing test. No, it's basically saying uh, uh, expect an invocation of the mock once, but never was. And it doesn't. So, are you using the new fluent syntax for that uh, assertion? That the should be equivalent? Yeah. No. Oh, so, so we need to actually. You know, okay, so we need to deploy and upgrade the library to actually yeah. make this happen. Okay, got so, it. Got it. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you open up the exception project now, we can do it on its unit test if you want to demo it there. Okay, let's take a look. So here is the exception project. Let's do this together. Chris, what do you think about that? So you already have that in there already. Nice. Nice. I think you're a great guy. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think you're changing you're changing so many projects you don't even know like it's just amount of people that are using this stuff is crazy it's crazy man all right so let me let me do this let me switch over to you well I have to merge um, I have to merge your code first so let me do that first and then pull latest from master what do you think about yeah. that idea? okay let's do that here is pull requests Okay, your build is complete. It says the build has passed. That's great. And then here's a merge. Okay, so now I merged it. Let's go back here. Pull straight from that. We might we might even deploy the, the library together. What do you think about that? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. 
So if I run this, we have 43 tests. Such a small library, but does huge impact, man. That's the thing about code, though, you know. Less is more, you know. Um, all right, so I have exception assertions in here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play around with the data. Right, so let's see. Do you have data added in here? Expected inner exception key. I'm going to change that key. I'm going to say XYZ like that. So yeah. if, I, if I run this, so technically, Chris, this should... Oh, ho, ho. Oh, there's your friendly summary, yeah. My man. <laughs> so, oh, this is perfect. So, uh, go ahead. So, so I think the first thing it it it, it does is a count on the keys, so it will tell you if it, it uh, found less keys than expected or more keys, mm. and then um, it will then tell you what keys is different, mm -hmm. either missing keys or additional keys, and then it'll do the um, comparison on the keys that's the same value nice um yeah did i say your last name right i hope i did yeah it's fine it's, it's, it's like i think the easiest one is to remember it's like a toy the toy yeah. okay and it's not letting me do the end i don't know why illegal syntax expecting valid start name character i thought that was just a string god's sake i'm gonna ignore it <laughs> because i don't like to be told what to do so here's four and then here's four oh i think wait uh i think we did release four hold on a uh, nougat.org i'm either out of date or out of my mind oh no it's two three that's right okay i swear to god man somewhere in my head I thought we already upgraded to 2.4. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay, so this is how I just change this. I'll just go here and say, and do this. Okay, let, okay this, this thing is being stupid. So let's, uh, let me do it this way. Authors, I'll just say, Christo, you, There you go. Better, right? Yeah. And, Disable, implicit, nullable, disable, right? Or do we need it? I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it as is. Okay, so with, with most of these libraries, um, Chris, uh, I have to put it in release mode to be able to generate that new version. And it's just as simple as that. Why is this guy complaining, though? Deep cloner. Oh, I just noticed that. What happened here? Interesting. Clean solution. Rebuild. Let's see what's this all about. Um, yeah, I think this is because of the nullable thing. Really. So if I say <laughs> yeah. yes, if I say disable, it will be much less annoying. I hope. Let's see. So this is your output possible. Yeah, gone. Yeah, this is why I disabled that nonsense. You know, I know it's probably, <clears throat> it, sometimes it's for a good reason, but the way it was represented is like just, 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 you know, going over someone's code like that and tell them, hey, you're bad. <laughs> it's yeah. just a horrible, horrible way of doing this. Okay, so let me, <clears throat> so here's, let me do a did, release. Did you undo that uh, change we did on the unit test? I thought I did. Look, the okay. only change I have is this guy. Okay, yeah, that's one I didn't pay attention. No worries. Config uh, release 2.4, right? So that guy goes. And what I'm going to do now is that we're going to go over. I need to find the... Um, oh, this is exciting, man. This is really good. This basically means that we can now... Well, first of all, you, you're going you're gonna to make a lot of people do a lot of work, like a whole lot of work. You know, but mo what's more important is that it's good work. It's basically, by the way, I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday and he said, wow, that now we have to do all of that stuff to upgrade. I said, that's the good thing. It's built in training. So it's getting you the mm -hmm. muscle memory to do it 50 times at once. And now, you know, the new thing, right? Uh, okay. So here's, here's the release. 
Wow, the no. first release uh, the first release of this was all the way back in September. I don't know, American date format confuses the crap out of me. Yeah, it's in September. It's a month day. <laughs> I I am that I am that foreign, Chris. You know, that's that's how <laughs> let me uh let, let me release this. Man, this is great. Let's go back here. I need to sign in, sign in, sign in. So I think the only thing left to do is to update the documentation then. Yes. And um, yeah, we, we, I, I will create an issue for it. I will try to get to it. Whoever gets to it first, you know, Chris, whoever gets to it first does it. I, um, for the most part, you know, I know, I thought people didn't care about these documentation. And then someone came up to me and said, how am I supposed to use your library? I was like, it's not intuitive enough. He said, just give me something that I can show people, you know? So I, I, I realized that, oh, I, I probably should, I probably should do this better. All right, there you are, my friend. Um, and then in the URL, I just go and link the uh, exception and it does a preview and it pulls all that stuff. The one thing that it never worked is that in GitHub, I have to centralize an image, but it doesn't show that in NuGet.org. It's it's really sad. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a sad story, but <laughs> all right, there it is. Here we go. We're either breaking uh, breaking 24,000 machines <laughs> <laughs> or we're upgrading their engineering experience, you know, really, really high. So it's it's one or the other. So we'll see what happens there. Um, okay, so this one is out of the way. Do, do you have any other ideas to make this library better? Anything that you can think of? I think this is this is a pretty good milestone to be honest with you like I'm thinking about the like what else can we do in terms of exceptions you know do you remember uh, you know some long time ago I think it was MS test where you would put the tag on top of the test and say this test is expected to throw an exception oh yeah yeah do you remember that yeah and I thought what if I want to do other things See, that's the problem with that approach is that it's assuming or it's just kind of putting me in a corner and saying, hey, this is how you're supposed to write this test and you're not supposed to do anything else other than throwing exception. What if I want to validate logging and stuff like that, right? So this is the problem there, right? Um, do you think that approach is better than what we do? We, we could do it. You know, we can do anything. It's just an attribute. It's just a tag. Yeah. What do you think about that um, approach? Mm -hmm. We can certainly add it. Um, I think we, we're testing for logging anyway at the moment because we check if the logger is called, if the logger is, is, is part of your service. Right. Um, so so that same 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 exception as in the logger uh, verifier is still there. Um, but yeah, we could look at the uh, attribute as well, just give people a different option if they're more used to that. I'm I'm also thinking about doing something, but I don't think exception is the right library for it. Like <clears throat> when I go and tell people, okay, you need to go and do it is same exception as, you know, um, so this area here, Chris, so it is same exception as right here. Um, I just want to throw this guy in here like that and just move on. But that's yeah. not going to be an easy one because the reason is, like, this is we don't control this. This is a, a different implementation, right? Um, and this is a limitation in mock. Mock is really stubborn. Did you know that mock wouldn't even let you use aliases? Like, if you go here and say expected exception, it will get mad at you. Look, oh, I right? didn't know that. Yep, and if you hover over it, it'll be like, nope, you can't contain named argument specification because it looks at it as an expression tree. Mm. I I got fired from a job once, you know, because I told the manager, you know, these are not expression trees, and he said to me, hey, this is there is no such a thing as expression trees. And then I showed him the Microsoft documentation, and he got mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing at him for the record. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, anyway, the, the, the point is that I think that 
I, I will try to dig a little bit into this one because this could make things a lot easier. You know, yeah, it'll improve readability and understandability as well if you can simplify that one. Exactly, and you know, worst case, you know, even even if I would just even if I would just go and say here is here is this whole thing. I could just do this like similar, right? So this me saying similar, right, is a lot easier than going saying it is same exception as, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just too much going on there. You know what I mean? So I'll I'll try and see. This shouldn't be th that hard, I don't think. Um, what this guy is really asking for here, if you look at the input in here. It's it's basically saying give me an exception, which is what this it is compare comparer is trying to do. I don't know, yeah. just just an idea that I wanted to run by you. So you mm. think it's a good idea too, just to get rid of this whole party that we have in here. It also, let me tell you, it this also helps out for scenarios where you're expected to pass a similar object, like the function itself is generating an object internally, so automatically it has a similar um it has a similar uh, values but not the same reference the yeah. problem with mock is that it's comparing references which is really really annoying and i don't know if you if they have ever kind of snapped out of that i don't know if they, there ever been an upgrade i mean as long as we're discussing the topic then we may as well right so if you do mock compare by a value not reference they'll probably tell you have it is the same and that's the thing so yeah, uh, equals matches. Yeah, go create a matcher from scratch. See, that's the thing with engineers. You know, you're gonna create all these files, right? That's very inconvenient. That's not how we're supposed to make these things happen. I think this guy's complaining exactly about the same thing. He's basically saying, "Why do I have to go and say it is blah blah like the same exception as it's it's uh, yeah." So, so no upgrade since got it. How to compare object instance in your unit this quickly? Um, equal. G. Look at that. Sure. Hey, what do you think about folks that use underscores like that for for their test name? This this style here is foreign to C sharp. I've never seen. Like I know some people use it. It just doesn't yeah. mean. I, I don't use it myself. I, it, it reads easier for me if I if I use casing. Yeah, oh, I'm I'm just so used to it that anything else is. By the way, something else I I I know you probably know this, but you know you you could actually go over the test like this and go and say, here is here is an, a display name for it. You probably know this, Chris. And this is we could go here and actually write it out like this. It's scary how the, the AI is just writing it out. Like the AI read the method name and said, oh, you want the name? Let me break it out for you. That's that creepy. Like that. That's really creepy. But if you look at the, if you now look at the tree in here, I think I have to do a rerun or something. Let's see. Rebuild. People ask me why I separate my projects. I get files about five different projects with their own infrastructure and stuff like that. People tell me why you do that. Well, look how big the project is, you know, doing a lot of work there. So does it actually change the test name? Let's find out. Rerun. I swear, man, I just tried it the other day. Yeah, there it is, DC. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know if that's more readable. I also seen some engineers do this. They go here, they make this test should, and then they go here and they say B blah blah blah. Wow. Right? I no. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, <laughs> but no. <laughs> yeah. so, all right. So here's here's the deal. I think I think your library is ready. Let's. We're going to try it in the real world, in real life, Chris. And then we're going to go tell a whole bunch of people, hey, you know, are you bored? We have something for you to do. Um, so this is exception. Yeah, I think it's ready. Does not provide support for this. Yeah, that's cake. 
Yeah, there it is. So 2.4. Okay, let's try it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to get file core. I'm going to reset the world. And I'll tell you about a little bug that I just discovered just while, while we're talking. Um, I'm going to go into... I'm going to upgrade exceptions across the entire thing. Come on. Wow, we upgraded a lot of things since. Well, Paul Wardy pushed a pushed a change for the 204 no uh, uh, no content API. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. He did it quick. Fa he did it pretty quick too. He, like he just went in there and was like, "Yeah, that's easy. I can get, I can do it real quick." I, I'm really proud of him for that. But um, okay, let's do it again. Then to so this guy here would be. We would go here and say contribution validation exception expected contribution valid actually actual actual contribution validation exception equals right and then await assert love the insanity that's happening here and then we can just go here chris and say should should be equivalent to Hmm. Yeah, this is exception assertions. You're not mm -hmm. kidding. Nice. Actual uh, expect, uh, expected. You're not kidding, my friend. Nice. Nice. So now if I run this. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> so now if I go here, just for people for people watching this so they understand, you could actually game our system today in terms of standardization and go and say, oh, you're throwing a validation exception. I can easily go here and say, even though you did log the right exception, I'm just going to throw an entirely different exception in here like this. That's what that's where Chris comes in and makes it really like, see, I completely erased the trace of everything, right? Every other test will pass in that realm, except for the one that I just upgraded. And that's why Chris is very valuable and really, really important because he's got the brain power. Oh, wait, some of them actually failed. Wait a second. That's interesting. So, well, not all of them, but some of them, right? So you see that guy is failing because of the, let's see. And also I am a, I am on a branch, so some other tests might be failing for other reasons. But and let's see why these tests are failing. This is me just really testing testing the library. Um, API foundations repositories. Repository validation error occurred. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect this to be a result of um, mm -mm -mm -mm. let's see so should throw validation exception where was the test that I was at or originally this guy here what happened to this guy this guy's happy still even though we kind of Hacked it. Let's see. What did I miss? Actual exception should be equivalent to actual should be ex uh, equivalent to expected. Right. And expected to have these details. Uh, let's see. And this is on the modify. And the modify is doing validations. And this did guy. You, uh, did you add extra keys on that one? Or, or the move? cause it to, to be different oh what i did was i i i hacked the um the try catch so in the try catch area in here oh yeah so that's just on the exception type yep so if i go here i basically went and said oh don't give me oh wait no this is this is supposed to pass because okay so new exception this is it that's my bad my example is bad yep so this is 
a new exception like this. So this is me completely erasing away the original inner exception. Now that test is supposed to fail. That that happy happy test that we were at is supposed to fail. Let's find out. Now that guy here, that guy was was passing. Now it's gonna fail because I actually changed the content of that exception. There you go, and probably it's gonna tell me even why it failed, which is even more fun. Here we go. <laughs> Nice. Nice. <laughs> this is perfect, mm -hmm. right? Now, the one thing the one thing is why are these other tests are failing though? That's the real test, uh, Christo. Let's let me revert everything and run everything and make sure everything is running. I'm gonna go to the master branch because this is a work in progress. Kylo and I are working on this one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just rebuild everything and then I'm gonna upgrade exceptions and then we're gonna see what happens. Yeah. I think we might have found a bug. We'll see. Okay, so so now all of these tests are, are passing, which is great. Yeah. Now, now let's go and upgrade. Let's see. We're gonna need to upgrade exceptions across this entire project. So I'm gonna go here and say NuGet package solutions. And then I'm gonna pick up I will just upgrade exception for now, just to make sure it's not kind of a conflict with something else. Okay, so this is upgraded. Okay, now let's run the same tests again and see what the problem is. Mm, so what's the problem here? Should throw validation exception on add if created date is not the same as updated date. And what this guy is complaining about, it's basically saying, I expected this to be called once. Okay, so in here, what are we doing? We're basically going and saying, date is not the same as this date. And... This is invalid exception. We're going here and saying add contribution task. Does it throw a sync and then same exception as. So in here, it's basically complaining that um, that they don't have the same key, which is interesting. Date is not the same as created date. Why is it mad at us for this one? What could have possibly be the change? Let me go into same exception as. And let me put a breakpoint here. And let me debug this guy. Okay. So what's actual exception? Actual exception should just have... Oh, it's not going to let me see it, is it? Here. This is... Oh, you know why it did that, Chris? Because we went in there and we said exception instead of exception. Like that. Okay. And I don't know then how did it how did it find same exception as? Let me run this and see. How did it find same exception as then? No, still not happy. Why is that? Exception, expected exception. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's saying I expected that your... Let's see, we're missing probably something. Hopefully it's a tiny change, but we'll see. So in here, we'll basically insert it is never, and then it is the same exception as, which is a funk of an exception and a Boolean. And it's passing this guy in. 
let's see the difference. Like, I want to go and see, like, what is actually being thrown versus what is actually being validated. And see, like, technically, this test, you might have actually found another problem in the way we're doing these tests, right? Because these are very specific tests to dates and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, this could be another opportunity just that we upgrade our tests. So this guy here has an inner exception, invalid contribution contact, correct the errors and try again. And then there is data. And the data should have a updated date and count of one. Date is not the same as created date. Okay, so that's the one we expect to happen. If I go back into the contribution async and go into try catch, and I pick up the invalid contribution exception, and then I do kind of pull out like a Doctor Strange kind of thing and just do this. There it is. So this is my invalid contribution exception. And this guy has an inner exception. Sorry, it is the inner exception. And it has data. Ooh, look at that. This guy has two things in there. So, so the problem is the test, not your library then. Mm. So this here is saying updated date. And the message here is date is not the same as created date. And also, date is not recent. I think your library just exposed a, a vulnerability in our tests. That's what it is. <laughs> all right approved <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you it's it's a great library <laughs> Listen, Lots of code drops now <laughs> a lot of code drops a lot of minor fixes minor and major fixes because mm -hmm. this now is exposing a vulnerability in the test because we're expecting a certain key why did it pass before was it basically saying? It, it might be because we didn't have that left-right comparison in, which was the other um, minor mm. uh, fix that was. Was that was that also the left? Okay, wait. So the PR was more uh, than just. Uh, uh, yeah, because I did it in a fluent way, it sort of covered um, things that we did in the other PR, so I closed them. Uh -huh. uh, they're no longer needed, but I think the only thing that comes to mind is, is that it might be the left-right comparison that... Interesting. Is that what it is? I did not know that. So, yeah, that's right. You did actually upgrade a couple of things on the logic itself, which means that in here... No, these are the assertions. An extensions area, yeah, then here. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay. 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 I think we're getting better. What do you think about that? I think we're getting smarter and we're getting better. You know, I think that's that's a great opportunity and a great advantage. I'm going to have to fix a few things in there, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, very grateful, Chris. Anyway, anything else from your side? Anything else that you think, you know, other than this same exception as, which is really, really, like, do you know how I know about these things? I have a bunch of interns that I try to kind of bring them up to speed, and some of them have no background in technology, like go software engineering, right? And these are the guys that keep, keep me anchored to the ground, right? Because you know how it is in the tech industry. You do this so long, the machine programs you in a way mm -hmm. where, you expect it you expect the obvious things are obvious but they're not yeah. right like this happens with me all the time people will come in and say dude i don't know what you're talking about you know and i'm like this is not obvious to you you don't see the generic inheritance thing <laughs> magic thing that's going on and people are like i have no idea what you're talking about right the scary thing in our tech industry is that People somehow revere those who say things that they don't understand. Have you seen this before? Mm. Like the more jargon words that you throw at people. Oh, NFT, blockchain, you know, this and that, you know. People be like, wow, this guy actually knows. Because because I don't know what he's talking about. 
automatically that person knows more. I'm I'm trying to kind of uh, odd these evens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I will give it a little bit of thought on the same exception as, but I, I have to say this is this is really good. Chris, this is this is great stuff. And test it from your side, on your own yeah. projects. I'll test it from my side, and then we'll uh, we'll send out a call to everyone to upgrade all our open source libraries for whoever want to make some points. Here yeah. it is, and hopefully that'll get us there. What do you think? Yeah, no, that sounds good. All right, my dear friend. Until fun, we meet again. Fun change. Yeah. Thanks, Hassan. Oh. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Chris, and uh, I look forward to hanging out with you again. All right? I'll talk Thank to you, you later. Thank okay, you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.